Hey guys, I'm back, and to celebrate my glorious return to YouTube, I thought I would demo a ferrofluid kit that Miles Power sent me in the mail. Miles Power is a fellow YouTuber. You can check his channel out here. And the ferrofluid kit is one of those cool little science demos that's, well, as safe as you can get with these things. So let's see what's inside our kit. Oh, we've got some pipettes some petri dishes to put the ferro fluid in. Now, this is supposed to prevent a mess, but you're going to spill this all over yourself, so wear clothes you don't care for, or at least a dark color. You have the ferro fluid itself, a blackish brown oil, very X-Files. Some surgical gloves, in case you're into that kind of thing. Neodymium magnets and some screws to play with the ferro fluid. A little pin and card that shows that you are proudly one of Miles Powers' shills. Go big science. And last but not least, safety instructions. So that's what Miles Powers' kit came with. And I thought I would bring some, some toys of my own, generously provided by the University of Victoria, to spice up the experiment a bit. So here I've got liquid nitrogen and some superconductors. I thought these would be quite fun to play with. Let's do some science. The basic idea with these kits is to put the magnets on one side of the dishes and the ferrofluid on the other. You'll notice that sticking the magnet on the bottom of a dish isn't very stable, and we can fix this by propping it up on a couple of boxes of equal height. Let's see. As I pull that guy in. The ferrofluid gets pulled onto the onto the screw. And you can see those little spiky bits show up. So this is a very tiny magnet. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. And if you see, look at what happens when you put it in your conductor, nothing happens. Until we expose it to some liquid nitrogen. Superconductors are materials with very little resistance to the flow of electrical current. All known examples of these materials have to be cooled well below freezing to work. So, thus the liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen? Superconductor. Now you see it starts to boil as it's cooling it down. Boils, 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 boils. We know that the temperature of liquid nitrogen is colder than the temperature at which this material superconducts. That means that once it's stopped boiling, the temperature of this guy is below the temp boiling point of liquid nitrogen. And now, if I pull it out, Place the magnet there, see it hovers. The reason the superconductors are able to levitate magnets is because they try and prevent any change in magnetic field inside them. When a permanent magnet is brought near the superconductor, the charges inside the superconductor start moving, and the moving charges generate a magnetic field equal and opposite the one made by the permanent magnet. This lets the magnet hover. When the superconductor heats up, it actually loses its superconducting properties and can no longer counter the magnetic field, letting the magnet fall. Normal conductors, like metals, can do this to an extent, but their non-zero resistance causes the induced currents to die out almost immediately. Now let's see what this will do to a ferrofluid. As you can see, the shape of the ferrofluid changes as we approach it with a magnet. The two things that control its shape are the magnetic field and the surface tension of the fluid. If we bring a warm superconductor near it, there's no change in the spikes, because it has no effect on the magnetic field. But if we cool it in liquid nitrogen, we get a really neat effect. As the superconductor warps the magnetic field outside the ferrofluid, the ferrofluid has to respond, creating this weird flow of spikes over its surface. So you see the magnetic field lines keep rearranging themselves. Quite neat.
as long as it's cold, as long as that's a superconductor, they'll rearrange themselves. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, check out Miles' channel and his store if you want to buy some of these ferro fluid kits for yourself. They don't include the liquid nitrogen, which is probably a good thing because it can be quite dangerous and you can get burns from it. So you really want to be careful with it. Have a physics question? Leave it in the comments. And as usual, please subscribe, like, and check us out on Facebook.